Since the beginning of 2024, the Ukrainian armed forces have destroyed and disabled 3,171 tanks of the Russian army, according to a statement by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. A tank battalion consists of 31 tanks. Therefore, Ukrainian forces have eliminated 102 tank battalions of the Russian Federation over the course of 10 months. The Ministry of Defense reported that May the 12th, 2024, became a sort of day of tank men for the Russians this year. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that on that day, Ukraine struck 31 enemy tanks, an entire battalion. Such losses could cost the Russian budget at least $9 billion. This figure is based on average global prices for armored vehicles. $9 billion is roughly equivalent to 16 annual budgets of the city of Chelyabinsk, which has the worst ecological situation in Russia. Meanwhile, instead of addressing internal social issues, the leadership of the aggressor state continues to pour huge sums into the war. Ukraine's Ministry of Defense stated, According to data from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Russian army has lost more than 9,200 of its tanks. At the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia was estimated to have around 3,300 operational tanks, suggesting that all those that initially drove into Ukraine and then some have been taken out over the course of two and a half years. It's impossible to know for certain exactly how many tanks Russia has lost during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so any figures need to be treated as estimates. Further complicating matters is what exactly Ukraine's general staff counts as a tank, with Ukraine's official count being plausible, yet most likely misleading. The daily figures from Kyiv just say tanks, but because it has a separate section for armored personnel vehicles, so it's my interpretation that they group main battle tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. Sashka Brushman, visiting research fellow for defense and military analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, told. In the Kursk region, Ukrainian troops are maneuvering tactics in conducting combat operations. Where the enemy tries to advance, believing that he already has an advantage, we maneuver, conduct a counterattack, win back a number of positions and create a barrage of grey zones so the enemy cannot enter this or that territory. The former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, General of the Army, Mikhailo Malomuz, spoke about this on the YouTube channel Govorit Veliki Lviv. During combat missions, the Ukrainian armed forces actively use UAVs, HIMARS, M270, eliminating personnel of the Russian army, and also use water obstacles, primarily the Seam River. Accordingly, powerful logistics routes and fortified areas are formed. It won't be easy for the enemy, the analyst predicted. Let me remind you that Putin ordered our troops to be pushed back from Kursk region by October the 1st. But you see, in this situation, none of Putin's instructions worked. So North Korean troops are being sent to Kursk region first and foremost to strengthen the Russian group and not to remove additional forces from Pokrovsko, Kurakovsko and other directions where they will continue to advance. Malomuz also emphasized that Ukraine should practice operations similar to Kursk in other regions of the Russian Federation, in particular in the Bryansk and Belgorod regions. The most important thing is to maintain the element of surprise, but unfortunately we do not have enough forces and resources to implement such plans. Ukrainian intelligence has reported that there are now 11,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia's Kursk region. Their number in the region is increasing, according to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He also reminded that it will soon be three months since the start of Ukraine's operation in the Kursk region. Ukrainian defenders keep the sanitary zone near the border under control. The president emphasized that the Kursk operation has significantly contributed to freeing Ukrainian defenders from Russian captivity. In Kursk alone, Russia had suffered 17,800 casualties over the past three months, Ukrainian Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Syrsky said on Telegram, including 6,600 killed. North Korea could not make an appreciable difference, said researcher Olena Gusenova in a new study for the Friedrich Norman Foundation last week. The regime, in perspective, 
could potentially provide Russia with an additional three to four units, comprising 15,000 to 20,000 soldiers of various skills, she concluded. Even in such a case, however, North Korean assistance is unlikely to change the overall course of the war. The reasons, she said, were political and military. The deployment of a large number of soldiers poses challenges in controlling their movements on the ground, heightening the possibility of desertion or defection. Gusenova wrote, requiring security personnel to closely monitor the troops. Some Ukrainian drone units operate more like tech startups than traditional military units playing a vital role in defending the country. As the Wall Street Journal reports, today's drone operators are becoming the most effective soldiers, often operating in ways that are very different from the military's norm. For example, the Clear Eyes drone battalion began as a group of civilian enthusiasts who used commercial drones to monitor Russian troops. The battalion now has engineering workshops, training courses for operators and even a recreation area. In the field, they modernize old ammunition, creating new types of weapons for drones. The battalion's leader, 37-year-old marketer Georgi Volkov, approaches running the unit like a startup, with an emphasis on innovation and efficient logistics. He stresses, one good pilot doesn't change anything. We are a team of civilians who want to destroy the enemy with ingenuity and technology. Most of the fighters in these units have not served in the army before and do not observe traditional military formalities. Since the start of the full-scale invasion in 2022, Ukraine has been actively using drones, striking Russian ammunition depots and energy infrastructure facilities. In particular, naval drones have forced the Russian Black Sea Fleet to change its deployment, and Dragon drones have brought additional fear into the ranks of Russian soldiers. The Wall Street Journal also cited the example of Alexander Dakno, a 29-year-old former co-working space executive who is now a drone pilot who has killed nearly 300 Russian soldiers in a year and a half. In October, President Zelensky announced that Ukraine could produce up to 4 million drones a year, effectively creating a new defense industry in the face of constant Russian attacks. In June, the Times reported that Ukraine was developing a swarm of drones that could attack targets without a pilot, noting that the drones would be able to interact with each other and fight as a team. On the eve, demonstration tests of Ukrainian weapons developments were conducted in Ukraine. In particular, seven companies presented developments in the drone swarm technology. Earlier, military expert Valentin Badrak, more and more FPV drones on fiber optics are appearing on the front. They are indeed resistant to electronic warfare, but are unlikely to become something revolutionary due to the nuances of their use. They can only be used over a very short distance.